Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are 2 Samuel 14 and 15. Now, I found myself a set of horse stables down here, uh, pretty close to the beach, actually. I think it's the police uh, horse barracks. Now, the reason I'm here is that this is the story of Absalom. Now, what happened is Joab, the uh, general of David realized that David was heartbroken and so he he knew that the reason he was heartbroken was that his son Absalom was in exile so he finds a actress from Tekoa dresses her up in mourning garb and says to her um, go and pretend before the king I'll get you an audience that your sons have had a fight that your one son has killed the other son and now the villagers are wanting to exact justice on the murderer and they're going to take your last uh, son away. So it happens and she's a brilliant actress and comes before David and David is indignant and he says, well, you don't worry, the, your, your son is going to be absolutely fine. And then she says, well, and she quotes the word of Joab, why do you judge like this? Why do you make this judgment? Be, because your son remains in exile and yet you're happy to be lenient to my son. And so she says, because you know full well, God is not a God who leaves people in exile, but he brings back the banished ones. Isn't that an amazing and, uh, revelation of the heart of God that Joab and this actress had, that, that God looks for banished ones. And, uh, you know, that's still his heart today, looking for banished people, those who are in exile, those who are in darkness. And so that's why we are called to participate with God and bringing banished ones back to him. Anyway, so David relents and he says, bring back my son, but he can't see my face. So for two years, Absalom doesn't see David and he, he's banished to his house. He goes on to the next chapter and um, uh, Absalom is, is really hacked off. So he calls Job. He says, come on, it's been long enough. My dad's been punishing me now. Let me, let me get uh, an audience with my dad. Joab doesn't even listen to him. And so he burns Joab's fields to get Joab's attention. Anyway, Joab sets up the appointment. Uh, and David, it says at the end of that chapter, he kisses his son Absalom. But there is this issue that Absalom has. He's rejected. He's got ambition. And he's very, very manipulative. And he's, he's violent. It's a recipe. It's a concoction for a disaster. And so what happens is that um, Absalom goes and gets himself 50 horses. Now, I'm assuming uh, they would have been housed in places like this. He gets 50 horses and, and he gets runners that run in front of him. And uh, they, they basically position themselves at the city gate. And, and what he does is that everybody who comes by, he wins their heart. You know how he wins them? By kissing them. He says to them, if they come close to him and bow down before him, he says, stand up, stand up. And he gives them a hug and a greeting. And he says, listen, if I was king, I was king you would have direct access to me I know you have problems getting to my dad you'd have direct access for me and for years four years he does this he gathers this huge following of people who loved him they said there was no one more beautiful in the land long hair that he used to cut the most intelligent most beautiful most handsome he he, he has a kid a number of kids but he has a daughter and he calls her Tamar after his sister that was raped so he's got issues he's he's nursing these grudges he's hugely manipulative there's, there's a problem brewing. And then he goes to his dad and he says, can I go down to, to sacrifice? I made this covenant with God. So, you know, he knew his dad's soft spot. So his dad says, yeah, off you go, go and, go and do your sacrifices. And he takes hundreds of men with him who unsuspecting, don't even know what he's going to do. And then he sends messages out throughout Israel and says, when, I, when, I, when the trumpets blow, declare me as king, which is what happens. When David hears that his son has won the hearts of the people, he's declared himself king. He gathers up his resources and he, his people and they leave. They flee for the desert. And as they go past the villages and towns, this entourage of David, people are weeping and they're crying. This is their king being shoved out by his son. And, you know, it's a tragic, tragic story. Ab Absalom taking the throne selfishly. David then plants one of his advisors there amongst Absalom's uh, advisors so that he can get feedback and he can frustrate the advice of Absalom and he actually prays this prayer he says to one of his advisors this is, this is what he prays he says to the Lord Lord 
use my advisors and use Absalom's advisors to frustrate his advice. And then he gives himself into God's hands. He says, Lord, if this is what you want, I'm in your hands. It's a tragic story of a son who was neglected by his dad, rejected by his dad. His dad didn't discipline properly. Uh, you know, this, this concoction multiplied itself and caused the, uh, the usurping of the kingship. It's a huge lesson in terms of, of leadership, in terms of uh, how you handle people close to you. Well, I trust as you, as you read it, not only do you see God's heart for the banished ones, you see God's heart for the lost ones, that there's no one that is beyond hope. Uh, you also see some sober lessons in leadership. God bless you.